Hey everyone, it looks like we're live. I wanted to come on here and I noticed that not everyone is really engaging with the videos probably because I talk too long. So my goal is now to um, to, to do like smaller videos that are more bite sized that are more convenient for you and go live more often so that it's not like one giant piece of content that you have to consume all in one city. Right. So think of it as snacking and like a confidence tip of the day instead of like a whole meal or sometimes I know I talk a lot and it's like a whole buffet. You, like, you don't want to eat for a week. I get that. So here we are. Today is Monday. Happy 4th of July weekend for those of you in America. And if you're not like right, I think it was also Canada Day on the 3rd. If I'm not mistaken and so right this year in 2020 tax day has moved from April April 15th to July 15th and so this is also like me coming clean and I realized as I was going through uh, talking with my um, accountant that I had been putting things off and um, I really bit off more than I could chew I tried to take on a new um, like accounting system and it wasn't really working and after talking with her I realized that this is why I had not met my commitments to getting my taxes done on time this year and I also wanted to address right the, the topic was are you frustrated because you set um, goals that were like too out of reach and what that means and I'll, um, yeah so first of all how many of you are done with your taxes I'm almost done I'm almost done this year we moved from Hawaii to California so I have two states that I have to file taxes in and um, sorry my my kids were calling um, so I have I still have kids, even though they're adults, right? They still call. Um, and just being in that space of getting everything together, what felt like it was so big and, and I just felt like avoiding. So I also wanna address avoidance in here. So that's the number one thing I wanted to address is we're frustrated sometimes when we set goals that are too far out. And so I wanted to talk about that. You know, let me talk about that first why do we set goals that are too way out there um, i was talking with someone recently and i asked them like what was what are your goals and um you know what do you want to do with your life what kind of dreams and visions do you have for your life and the goals that they were um setting were like way out there kind of like a 10 year maybe 15 year um a, I'll call it like a legacy goal. Like in my lifetime, I want, you know, I want this to be my legacy. Cool. And then like as we try to bring it back and because um, my genius is creating, creating systems and structure so that you, um, things happen like clockwork and you can free up your time. So you have time to really do what you want to do instead of being bogged down in the weeds, right? in the mundane everyday tasks. And as I, um, as we're talking, her goals are really way out here. And I try to keep bringing her back in like, hey, let's, let's folk, like, let's try and get a plan for this month or even this week. And then she kept like going out here to this really, really far out goal. And I was like, hmm. So I, I we kind of talked about like her pattern of setting goals and the reason why people set goals that are this far out is because they're afraid of okay when when you set high expectations for yourself you talked about it in another in another video about imposter syndrome and things but when you set goals that are super high and super outrageous it's kind of telling your brain that, hey, it's really far out. It's really super outrageous. So therefore, I really don't have to do anything right now. 
right? So I'm going to bring my taxes into this, right? I usually have, I have a CPA that I used in Hawaii. Don't have access to him now. So I was like, well, it's not, you know, then COVID happened and, you know, a lot of different things happened. Priorities had to shift. I was like, well, I have until July. But in reality, it takes me from January to, to March to get all my paperwork together. And I'm like, oh, I still have time. I still have time. And um, I kind of I kind of put it off, right? Because my business is growing and expanding. So I've been dealing with what's happening right now. And taxes seem very far away. Now taxes are in what, 10 days or less, like nine days from now. And I'm like, whoa. Um, and so when we set things that are too far out, it's, it's, it's really setting yourself up for failure. And it's really, um, you already have, you already are predicting failure. Does that make sense? And you, having, um, unreachable goals and setting unrealistic expectations, it's, it's your planning to fail, right? There's that, that phrase said, fail to plan, plan to fail. But there's a lot of people who plan and plan and plan, and then nothing gets done, nothing gets executed. Because it's, you're always in the planning stage, you're always like trying to map out things, you're always trying to, but nothing gets executed because your goals and your visions and your dreams are like so far down the road that um, anything you do today will not directly turn into or manifest that goal and dream and vision that you have. Does that make sense? If you're watching the replay, give me hashtag replay. And if this is really hitting you in the heart, give me some heart emojis right now because I feel like there are a lot of you uh, here in the group that set really high expectations for yourself, maybe not even in this group, but I know there's a lot of people in the entrepreneurship community come into entrepreneurship with big dreams and goals and visions. I mean, I did the same thing. Like, I want to help the world. I want to save the world. And then, and then when, right, when you get with a business coach, the first thing that they ask you is like, what's your offer? What's your niche? Who are you serving? Who are you helping? And I'm like, I don't know. I just want to help the world. And then, right, you have to go out there. You have to start doing your market research and learning who you are, like really getting a sense of who you are, what's your purpose and your identity, who God created you to be, and then match it with your skill set or the things that you list on your resume. And then kind of like one of the mentors that I, I have, he calls it creating your peanut butter and chocolate, like Reese's, right? Reese's peanut butter cups, creating that. Oh yeah, it must be fire. <laughs> There's a fire truck outside. But right, it's creating your peanut butter chocolate combination of what, what it is that you do and who it is that you serve. And um, for a long time, I had been avoiding talking about my refinery experience and all the leadership and pretty much everything that I built there. I'm like, no, I just want to be a coach. I don't want to have anything to do with my former life. And I left that out of the picture, but that's a whole chunk of my identity that I left out. And now the clients that I work with, they're all private clients um, that I help build systems and I do project management work for, which is what I used to do in the refinery. Like that's what they want. And I realized there are so many entrepreneurs out here that don't understand project management. They don't understand purpose and priorities and where they meet. Um, so a lot of times when we set goals, it's like way far out there. But right, if you have been in corporate, right, uh, your, um, and I, well, in the company that I worked for, we had an annual business plan rollout meeting where everyone would come to like, doesn't matter what department you're in, you would come to the business plan and you would hear the business plan getting rolled out, right? This would call it the business plan rollout. So you, you go to the rollout and like they feed you and they, 
I don't want to say they wine and dine you, but they incentivize you to attend the meeting because it's boring. Who wants to talk about goals and visions and aspirations, right? I was, I was in operations, so I was in the part, the implementation part of the business. And we had engineers, we had, you know, team leads that were the, the visionary part. And then that's all good and great. But really, can we execute the plans that you guys are laying out for us? And it's like, hmm. So uh, we were in the day to day, we were in the weeds and um, hearing the plans laid out, they really needed us as the implementers to buy into the overall vision and mission for the year. Uh, and then, right, so you have the annual goal and then you would have quarterly goals, right? It's like, okay, this quarter, like what are big projects that are coming down the pipe? And of course they're separated by, uh, by unit, right? In, in the refinery, each unit made a different product and that's how we were separated. And based on our unit and our department, well, we had a department and then a unit, right? So in our unit, what big projects did we have coming down the pipe that we needed to prepare for and plan for? Because how many of you know, like you can't execute a project same day, right? There's a lot of steps that lead up to the execution of said project. So we take businesses like coaching business, for example, right? Say you want to do a launch and you want to enroll clients by X date, right? You have to reverse engineer that process and that goal, right? And if you are by yourself, it's a lot harder to uh, work yourself up and like really keep that vision and mission front of mind when you feel discouraged, when you're battling imposter syndrome, when you feel like you're not good enough. And that's why it's important to set goals that are not like super far out, but that are easily attainable and you can see progress, right? So annual goal, quarterly goal, monthly goal, and weekly tasks, daily tasks. And that's how you usually break down a project, right? Or if you're, uh, if you're doing like just a project project and not a project rolled out over time, it's really timeline of the project start to finish, right? And then there's separate phases of the project, right? There's planning phase, and then there's implementation phase. And then the part that everybody forgets about is the postmortem or what happens after. And you go over like, um, what we used to call the plus delta, what was good, what worked, what didn't work. And you tag all of the action items that you need to clean up before you execute again. Right. And when you're, you're this far out, like start date is, or execution phase of the project is not to like 18 months. It's easy to just come in and like, oh, and it's kind of like this airy fairy phase because there's no, there's no deliverables that have to, that have to be created until it gets closer. And then in this phase, it's like, you're dreaming and you're like, oh, in a perfect world, uh, right, I worked in a manufacturing plant, so it's different than, than business, but it's, I've learned project management is the same all across the board, right? Planning phase, it's like this, uh, like dream up whatever you want to dream up. And it, it's really, it's very fun, especially fun for us creatives. Like, oh, wouldn't that be nice, right? Especially if you've done a project before. Right, you have the postmortem and like you look over the postmortem list, like, oh right, I remember this last time we wanted to try this, like we use chemicals, so wanted to try this chemical, it's supposed to be super fancy and clean up really well. So yeah, let's try and get that. And then when you you start looking at cost and effectiveness and um, in Hawaii we had to ship everything in, so shipping costs were a lot or even getting contractors to, to execute cleanup projects. Just like shipping the equipment in sometimes wasn't really worth it. So, right, you have to cost and benefits and weigh those. Um, but what I, what I really wanted to touch, touch on is 
this far out keeps you like having your goals like this far out or like I'm going to go off screen having your goals this far out and you you keep extending like your vision and goals like keep saying it's five years from now or next year or next year or next year and you keep breaking commitments with yourself you have to ask yourself why one why do I set goals so far out that they're super unattainable basically because you don't want to reach them just gonna be upfront when you set goals that are super far out it's really because you honestly don't want to reach them and you're scared not that you're, you're not even scared that you might not execute well which is another issue right imposter syndrome you're not going to be able to execute or deliver but it's really not even wanting to execute and um, there's a verse in the Bible that says hope deferred makes the heart sick and there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there that um, have this hope deferred sickness they keep saying next year I'll make money or next year I'm gonna launch or next 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 and they keep putting it off right what happens right that's when depression sets in that's when you start thinking I'm not good enough I shouldn't do this maybe it wasn't for me right and those, those are all the thoughts that are going through your brain as you're thinking oh yeah maybe later because right now I am not good enough in this phase in this state of where I am I'm not good enough to bring about my 10-year vision I'm gonna let that sink in where I am right now I'm not good enough to execute my 10-year vision but I know you know working on myself doing all this mindset work um, maybe I need to hire a VA because I really can't do it in this current state that I'm in Right? So you invest in uh, marketing courses or, you know, there's so many online courses that you can invest in to get your mindset right. Or you read ebooks or you attend summits and you're like, God, there's something up here that I just need to shift in order for me to execute that giant 10 year vision. Right? And so when and so I also want to address the pattern of avoidance right by thinking you're not good enough and then you go ahead and you invest in that next best thing I've been there I, I've so been there and I you know I I'm still there on, on certain parts of my business I'm not gonna lie right but I'm you know I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just gonna invest in this next thing that's going to take me to the next level then once I get to next level I will be ready to execute this 10-year dream and like um, what I see is a lot of people get stuck on like what what's my offer what do I have to bring into the world and really your business is not going to grow and scale until you really solidify that offer and that's where people like me come in right Project managers can't manage a project that is non-existent. It's pretty much a pipe dream. And so um, what I'm going to focus on is right doing these videos, helping you guys get there. Because I realize it starts with the, the mindset issue. And when I was working as a health coach and helping people with adrenal burnout, uh, the phrase that I kept hearing myself say is adrenal burnout is the disease of discontentment. Again, adrenal burnout is the disease of discontentment, right? We're not content where we are. Therefore, we keep trying and doing and doing and doing, and then we burn ourselves out. Not good. And so if you're sitting here and you're like, I didn't execute second quarter. And right, it's that time, it's that season where everyone's asking, well, what? it's July, it's summer. What are your goals for the summer? What are your plans for the summer? And I get it, it's COVID, it's quarantine, so it's hard, right? My plans have totally changed because I don't have access to Disneyland 
and theme parks that I'm used to, to going to that was part of my, my weekly plan. I don't have access. So I have a 30 day meal plan that I, I, I execute like clockwork. Not working right now because the weekends I had left open for us to go out and eat. Restaurants are not open. <laughs> so, you know, there um, what eight days of meal planning that are missing from my calendar right now because I can't go out to eat to a restaurant. So I'm recalibrating my meal planning system right now as we speak. And I, I'm also on a new diet plan. It's not a diet plan. It's more like a gut restoration plan where I can't eat the same things that I used to eat. And if um, like, like sugar and dopamine, I'm not supposed to eat sugar or not supposed to eat carbs right now. It's because I'm trying to like rebalance my gut and not having carbs when you need a dopamine hit is really hard and there's this uh, struggle on the inside but we'll save that for another day so all i'm saying is if you've not like if you're feeling down on yourself because you didn't hit your quarter two goals and you're struggling now to set your third quarter goals because you're like why I didn't hit it last month or last quarter, so why am I going to start anything this month? It's totally okay. You probably were an overachiever. Raise your hand if you're an overachiever. You probably set your goals too high. It's fine. Just recognize it and recognize the pattern, right? Setting your goals too high is a symptom of avoidance. Not that you're avoiding doing the work because I know you guys are working, working, working in your business like every day, laying it down, slaying it fierce, right? But you get frustrated. You have that feeling, hope deferred, making your heart sick. And then sometimes you get into this depressive state like, Lord, why? Why am I even doing any of this? Right? If this is your will, if this is your plan and purpose for my life, why am I not able to execute? Why am I not slaying it? Right? You have like this abundant life. Right? Uh, John 10.10 10 promises abundant life. And you're, you know, you're not living it. Maybe you're doubting yourself and your purpose and all of that. And so what I want to say, after I swear I thought I was gonna be short-winded when I get when I get excited and God drops um, content into my spirit I feel like I have to speak out and this content is actually not what I wanted to talk about today so this is like a Holy Ghost led um, broadcast and um, yeah what um, I'm planning my own launch and there's a challenge coming up on July 20th and it's going to be here in this group. Oh, well, we'll see. I'm going to see how I feel if I want to put it in a separate group so that those of you who actually want to join and want to, you know, commit, right? The, the four, one of the four elements of leadership is commitment. If you're, if you're wanting to commit to the challenge and wanting to participate, I might host a pop-up group. We'll see. Um, I'm, I'm also, like, because I'm a high empath, I'm also feeling into what what I need to say, what I need to share, and how to convey that. But for sure, the date is set. July 20th, we are having a five-day challenge. So starting Monday, July 20th, all the way to the 24th, we are having a five-day challenge um, on how to have it all, right? All is an acronym, but it's, right? We're gonna align our purpose and our priorities, which is what I'm talking about today. And I'm gonna teach you how to leverage systems and processes so you can create stuff on autopilot. And then how many of you guys would love to get, uh, like I calculated it, something that takes you five minutes every day, if you could automate it, you'd save yourself two and a half hours a month. What could you do with that, right? You could schedule yourself a spa day, a half, like, it's not even like a 30 minute mani-pedi that you just squeeze in, right? And you feel guilty about it. 
No, it's like saving yourself five minutes a day by automating some of your um, systems and processes, even your life processes. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, I used to automate my coffee and smoothie every morning because I, I couldn't function. I used to wake up at 3.30, or 3 a.m. and at 3.30 I wanted to have a half an hour before I left for work at 4 to really read my Bible and get prepared for the day because I knew I was going to be crazy busy. And so I created a routine that I could do in 30 minutes, but I had to prep some stuff the night before, but it saved me time in the morning when I didn't have the luxury of time that I have now that I work from home. Right now I spend two hours in the morning on my morning routine. Yeah, I even like did some workout in that 30 minutes, like a real brief workout, but I needed the energy pumping, like my blood pumping in order to execute. So I just did like what I call the 10, 10, 10, like 10 pushups, 10 sit-ups, 10 um, like jumping jacks, which were modified because I lived in an apartment. <laughs> so I didn't want to wake up the neighbors. But you, you can automate so many things in your life and buy back your time. Right, so that's what our challenge is going to be about, how to have it all. And that's my system for having it all. Align with your purpose and priorities. Leverage your systems and processes so that you can live a life that you love. Simple. Okay, hope this helps you. And um, yeah, if you are having trouble like actually setting your third quarter goals, let me know, you know, we can hop on a DM and I can help you just work, work through that um, real quick. And so another thing that I think you guys don't know about me is I am a transform certified transformational coach. So there's like some NLP in there um, in the studies that I've done. So there's a lot of mindset practices that I have at my disposal. Uh, one of my clients, I'm helping her with... Um, Money mindset, money mindset. Um, she's a business owner. She's a lovely photographer. But I'm helping her shift out of hourly pricing to package pricing. And it takes that mindset shift for, um, for you to really understand what it is that you offer and be able to charge what you're worth, right? And that's, that's also part of like buying your time back. It's really stop working for peanuts and really charging with your work, what you're worth so that you don't feel resentment. And we're gonna be talking about that in the challenge, right? That's the A piece, aligning your purpose and your priorities so that you're not doing work that you hate, right? And that's the last piece, living a life that you love, creating a business. I know that's Marie Forleo's tagline, which I'm, I'm not trying to steal. But that's what I feel in my heart is right. I wanted to create a life and a business that I love that I don't hate coming to every day. And I was able to build that for myself by charging what I'm worth and raising my prices and really committing to, to my clients. And it doesn't really matter like if they came back in the day and you know back when I was charging a little, I don't serve them less, I'm committed to their success, no matter how much they paid me. Because I know that committing to their success leads to my success. So now, the new clients that come in, right, I am I'm scaled up, therefore they get scaled up results. Okay, all of that to say, look, look for, um, if you're not on the email list, go ahead and tag me below and I can add you to the email list because that's where, um, most of the, the notifications are going to be coming out um, to, for the challenge and all of that. So I'm going to be creating that. If you want to be in the challenge, say all in, right? Because we're talking about all. Alignment, leveraging, and loving life. Okay. Talk to you guys again tomorrow where... Um, I don't know what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. I think I feel like I want to talk about this tomorrow, but yeah, I think I think we're going to have to switch things up. So I'll see what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, and I'll talk to you then. Okay, bye.